Hey everyone, this video is going to summarize the different medications available for alcohol use disorder. We're going to talk about a few different drugs. These include naltrexone, acamprosate, disulfram, topiramate, and gabapentin. One thing I wanted to know is that you can see the first three options are the ones that are actually approved by the FDA for alcohol use disorder. So we'll start off by talking about naltrexone. This is the first line for patients with moderate to severe alcohol use disorder. It works as an antagonist at the mu opioid receptor. Some contraindications to be aware of is that it can't be used in patients who are using opioids in any context, whether that's through heroin or through uh, prescribed pain medication, and it's also contraindicated in patients with liver disease. Some important benefits to be aware of for naltrexone are that it may reduce the number of heavy drinking days a patient experiences, it can help reduce cravings, and importantly, it can still be used even while a patient is drinking. So even if a patient's goal is to not become completely abstinent from alcohol, it can still have these important effects in terms of decreasing the amount that they drink. So there's two main formulations of naltrexone available. There's the lung-acting naltrexone injectable, and then there's also the oral option. So the lung-acting injectable is known as Vivitrol. This is an IM injection where you're, uh, you get 380 milligrams every four weeks. Some common adverse effects to be aware of are nausea, fatigue, and a decreased appetite. The oral naltrexone is known as Rivia. So this is an oral tablet. You can start with 50 milligram daily, or you could tie trade up with 25 milligrams. Generally, it might be a better idea to start with 25 milligrams just to avoid any GI side effects. And some common adverse effects to be aware of include nausea, headache, and dizziness. It's important to get liver enzymes a few weeks after starting naltrexone, and then again every six months after that. We'll move on to a camprosate, brand name Camprol. This is the first sign for patients who have contraindications to naltrexone. The way this medication works is by glutamate transmission modulation at the mglu R5 receptor. The main contraindication to be aware of is renal dysfunction, and generally uh, we know this with a creatinine clearance that is less than 30. Some benefits to be aware of with Camprol are that it is effective in maintaining abstinence, it can be used in patients using opioids as opposed to naltrexone, and then it can also be used in patients with liver disease also. In terms of dosing, you want to give it once abstinence has been achieved. So we can compare this to naltrexone, which can be taken even while the patient is drinking. The usual dose for Camprol is 666 milligrams TID. If a patient does have a creatinine clearance between 30 to 50, then you give them a lower dose. So you'd give them 333 milligrams three times a day. Some common adverse effects include diarrhea and fatigue. And obviously this medication is contraindicated uh, in conditions with poor kidney function because it is excreted by the kidneys. The third FDA approved medication is disulfram, which is also known as Antabuse. This medication works by blocking the conversion of acetaldehyde to acetic acid. So what happens is you get a buildup of acetaldehyde um, and then a patient drinks and then it becomes kind of like a toxic reaction where they'll have headache diaphoresis, palpitations, nausea, vomiting, flushing, and a general feeling of illness. Some contraindications for this medication include coronary artery disease and psychosis. And one thing to be aware of is that uh, the patient must have 48 hours of total abstinence before starting antabuse. For dosing, you could start off with anywhere between 250 and 500 milligrams daily for one to two weeks. And that would be followed by 125 to 500 milligrams uh, daily for a maintenance dose. Kind of like naltrexone, you want to obtain your liver enzymes a few weeks after starting and then six months after that. And then continuing to get them every six months. We'll move on to our off-label medications, the first of which is topiramate. So topiramate works by blocking voltage-gated sodium channels and increasing GABA activity. You do not want to use topiramate if a patient has a history of kidney stones. The interesting thing about topiramate is that it is an anti-epileptic. So for patients with seizure disorder who have failed uh, treatment with naltrexone or camprol, this is a good option for them to consider. It's not as effective as naltrexone and camprol. However, it, does, it has been shown to decrease alcohol consumption compared to placebo, and it is a good option in patients who have a history of seizure disorder. For dosing, you could start with 25 milligrams daily, and then you have a lot of room to maneuver if it needs to go up. Some adverse effects to be aware of include cognitive impairment, headache, fatigue, and dizziness. Gabapentin is the last medication we'll talk about. Studies regarding gabapentin and alcohol use are kind of mixed. Some studies show that gabapentin has, been sh has reduced heavy drinking days, uh, and it can also help with alcohol withdrawal. 
dosing can be anywhere from 900 to 3600 mg's per day. The good thing about gabapentin is that it can be used for a number of different conditions. So if a patient has a lot of different issues, this could be something that could potentially uh, contribute to helping a lot with those other ones too. Some common adverse effects are generally GI problems and then some dizziness. So some things to consider when trying to determine the best medication for a patient with alcohol use disorder. So if a patient has liver disease, you can try uh, acamprosate and baclofen is another medication that has shown some success as well. Obviously, naltrexone would be contraindicated in these patients. If a patient has alcohol use disorder as well as a co-occurring opioid use disorder, these patients uh, can get naltrexone, but you want to make sure there's an appropriate time since their last opioid exposure. You do not want to give naltrexone while they are actively using opioids. If a patient is interested in reducing alcohol use but not fully stopping it, then we would give them naltrexone. And then in pregnant patients, you typically do not want to rely too much on medications for them and you want to try and manage their alcohol use disorder with some psychosocial treatments, counseling, and things along that line. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them below. Thanks.